Good morning, beautiful beings. Welcome to Wisdom Circle Wednesdays for January 31st of 2024. Thank you all for joining us live here today for our very first Wisdom Circle. So um, let's see, just some housekeeping things here. If you are here with us live, um, you are welcome to drop questions here under the questions tab. And then also the chat tab is available for all of those who wish to chat. Um, so yeah, we will go ahead and get started here. <sighs> so to begin, let's all drop into the heart space. So just closing your eyes, putting your attention to the physical heart, that place where you find your light, and just imagining connecting heart to heart with the earth and taking in a deep breath from the earth, breathing it up through the feet and into the heart. Next, connect with you as creator God, as soul and breathe in that light of you into the heart. And the third breath, breathing in that light of you, that light of the earth, bringing them both together within you. And you become the conduit, the connection between creation and the earth. And it brings you into the heart space. All right. So let's see. Checking in here. Uh, we have a lot of wonderful folks on here this morning. Hey, Rachel from Ozark Valley. Hey, John from Mexico. Thanks for being here. Connie. Hey, Malik. Good to see you here. Nika from Southern Cali. Hey, Alan. Ah, Grand Rising, Lauren from Peoria. Hello from Minneapolis. Hey, Grant from South Africa. Glad you joined us. Hey, Johan from Sweden. Thanks for being here today. So, I guess the, the vision of the Wisdom Circle. So, I would like to share this vision. Um... You know, it all started when I witnessed my sister, Brenda. Now, a lot of you know of my sister. I speak about her all the time. Um, she is the one who really has shown me the daily miracles that can be through the consciousness work, through working with your light. But one day, not too long ago, I was watching Brenda work with somebody. And I tell you, she we see some miraculous things like things with fist sized tumors in the lung. One telephone session with Brenda, two weeks later, they're gone. Had a friend with pancreatic cancer sent home to die. Two months later, they're fine. If I ever get a rib out, I can text my sister. She doesn't even read the text and I can feel her pushing her rib back into place. We've seen her with a shattered finger in the very next day, not a single fracture in that finger. So there are, are a lot of miracles that we witness on a daily basis that simply comes from working with your light. But one day I saw Brenda working with the client and, you know, she's always said that, you know, it's not me doing the work. It is you. Well, this day that I witnessed Brenda, she stood in her light and she brought her client in. Her client stood in their light. All she does is she holds that sacred space with her light and it is the client whose soul does the work and the work happens. So the concept of the wisdom circle is the fact that wisdom is the new light. And this is a safe, sacred space for us to all bring our light together so that all of those who stand here can receive that remembrance, that connection to self. 
So let's talk really quick about the wisdom. So there's been an opening within consciousness that has occurred here less than a year ago, actually. And this opening was the, the potentials. So your soul brings all of these potentials for creation throughout all of your lifetimes, these potentials of experiences. And for eons, maybe a thousand lifetimes for some of us and more, we have been in this box of limited potentials here on this earth plane. These potentials that we chose from, well, soul growth and learning, that is what the majority of, of our lifetimes have been. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful. We seem to only really be remembering and haunted by the ugly through the lifetimes. But there really was a lot of beauty within those times. But basically, when this opening has occurred, it is allowing us to bring all of our lifetimes into wisdom. So imagine, you will, um, your Akashic Records, if you want to see it that way. How I've always described this whole concept of all of your lifetimes is the human is the hub of this wagon wheel. And this entire wheel is made up of your lifetimes and experiences. All of these potentials that your soul has brought to you up until this point. And what is happening for humanity is, is that all of these lifetimes and experiences are coming home. They come home through the human. The human is, again, the hub and the wagon wheel. And the human is the one, the here now human, is the designated ascendee for all of your lifetimes. So you here and now are the one that is holding the space with your soul for all of your lifetimes to come home. And when they come home to soul, that is where this new light comes in. Humanity is creating a new light. And this light is the wisdom of your lifetimes and that of your soul. So this box of potentials that I've spoke of, this box of limited potentials in creation opened up. It just disappeared last March. And we are able to pull in these higher potentials in creation. This is how my sister went from having a shattered bone in her finger one day, waking up the next day, and not a single fracture in that bone. It's not that she healed overnight. It is that she allowed herself to manifest, to bring in, to allow in this higher potential in creation. And that higher potential is no more shattered finger. So those are the type of miracles that we can allow within our own selves by standing in these spaces. So the Wisdom Circle Wednesday is a space where we come together as the human. And within the circle, so I see it as like this giant round table. And we all stand at the edge of the table. On the table within the circle is our wisdom, our light. And it is a place where we can come and be and be with others who are standing in their light. And through those lifetimes of experiences, we have amassed all kinds of wisdom, which is individual to each of us, because this wisdom is based on those lifetimes of experiences that have come in as wisdom. And so within this wisdom circle, we each bring our own flavors of wisdom because we are all masters here and masters of many different things. Perhaps the same things, but with a totally different flavor. So the wisdom circle is not about bringing the human concepts and the different modalities. Um, basically, we do. I do want to include the human participation from people through the questions, through the chat. 
And what I've envisioned with this is that as we come together and somebody has something that they would like to bring up, an issue within their world, and I will simply walk through how to work with this, with your light in these new ways. And that's the thing, everybody, is that we're really stepping into a new paradigm of how we do this work. So that is what I wish to share with you, is this new way, a new paradigm of working with your light. And so I'd like to do that through example. And that way we can all follow along and we can apply these different ways of working with our light. So anyway, I, I hope that uh, everybody here is, um, is in alignment with this whole concept here. And again, would really love to still hear from everybody uh, throughout this process. But we're going to go ahead and um, step into this circle. So this is something that um, a good friend of mine, Samson, he helped me create this wisdom circle along the way um, when we were in Chicago here about a month ago. And it's really a powerful space. Again, I, I see it as... Um, Again, that round table that we all come to and bring our wisdom. So let's go ahead and let's begin to step into this space and really start to feel into it. So again, closing your eyes, go into the heart. And invite in your light. So when you work with your light, it's not, it's not you directing it. It's not you saying, oh, I got a sore hip, so let's fix that. Bringing in your light is a softening, a softening of you and allowing. All the work that we do, it's not the human that does it but the human does participate in all of this work through the softening and the allowing. Now, your light, this light that we are working with, it is a part of your soul, but it is also the culmination of the wisdom that comes through. And the beautiful thing is about this space is see, we took two years. We even have, uh, gosh, there's a couple of uh, different classes like the Lightworkers Academy. There is, um, gosh, Soul Alchemy. And these are a couple of classes on twistedsage.vhx.tv. And these are paid classes that you can do and you can find most of it on YouTube actually. But we, we did the work with the wisdom of integrating those lifetimes into wisdom. And for me, it was two and a half long years of working with all these soul aspects, all of these things that came into my awareness, um, the different projections of different lifetimes, different experiences. And through that two and a half years of working with that wisdom field, I've been able to bring in all of those lifetimes and bring them into wisdom. Now, this field that we are stepping in here, this wisdom circle, for any of you who have are new to this work, it is a beautiful place to be because it is a shortcut. When you truly allow in your light, it begins to do this work for you. And again, it's not the human that is in charge of doing this work. The human becomes the conduit, the hollow bone, as the shaman would say. You are simply the usher. 
of all of your lifetimes and experiences into wisdom. With many of us, these experiences and lifetimes, these energies get stuck within our body. We begin to own them. And we make that choice. We're like, oh, well, that's a past life. And it's, it's here to bring me wisdom. It's kind of like working with a ghost or a wayward in that we don't speak with a ghost because they have the same consciousness, mentality, traumas as the human did. So when you look to a ghost, you're not, they're not wise. They're not connected. But when that ghost, when it crosses over and it becomes part of soul, then when you speak to that aspect of that person, it is wise. It has released its traumas and it is definitely a wiser being than it was a ghost. Same concept with these lifetimes that they could be just coming to you with these traumas and they can project them into your reality creation. I've told the story several times of every time I stepped on my motorcycle for a little while, I could see myself rolling across the highway and my daughter standing there mourning for my death. I knew this was me showing me this. This went on for two weeks until I finally got a hold of my sister and said, Hey, what's going on? And it was simply another lifetime that was projecting its fears into my reality creation. After doing this work with the integration of lifetimes for that two and a half years, I found that I was at peace for the first time ever. I never realized I was standing in a loud crowded room of myself. And so when we begin to embody our light, allow in our light, it is also bringing light to the mind as well as to the body. And so when you bring in your light, you will find that these old physical aches and pains, the emotional pains, these things just seem to lessen. And the more that you can just be in that space and hold your light and just be, the more things completely disappear when you step back into you. Because that's the thing. It is tough to hold your light, especially in the beginning. But it is something that with practice, it is something that we can do. We can hold that light in everyday life. All right. So, gosh, where to go from here? Um, does anybody have any questions or clarifications? And please do drop that on the chat if you do. So, okay, let's, um, let's continue with this embodying the light. Again, it's a softening and allowing, and I'm going to take us into a couple of meditations to take us into another space. The first space that we're going to go to is called the nothing space. It is a space where it is nothing but all of your energy unmanifest. So it feels like absolutely nothing. When we step into this space, our mind even goes blank. But this space of nothing is a space of everything. It is a space of all potentials in your creation. It is all of your energy. And when we step into this space and we bring in our light, our light then begins to illuminate these higher potentials, potentials that you've never seen because you've been in this box, this box of limited potentials. But when we go into this nothing space and we come there with our light, then that is truly when the world begins to change. These highest potentials, again, this is what my sister did with her finger, but it is also how my sister does the work anymore. And it is an amazing practice where you simply stand in your light 
in that space of highest potentials. And you will allow those highest potentials to seep out into your world, into your creation. And when you do this, everything begins to change. Your relationship with the world, your relationship with people, and your relationship with yourself. So we have quite the concepts to cover throughout these sessions. One of them is radical self-acceptance, and we'll get to that in the next session. But for now, here we go again, putting your attention to your heart, dropping into that heart, grounded with the earth, and inviting in you, inviting in your light. And it's just a simple invitation that in allowing. And for some of you, all of us may wish to do this. We make a clear conscious choice, a statement from within the heart that we release any blockages that prevent us from embodying our light. Any of those old oaths, vows, contracts, promises we made to ourselves or to others. And the one big promise we made to ourselves when we first came in to not remember. We simply make the statement to ourselves that I choose to remember my light, that I choose to allow in my light into myself and into my world. And if you feel those tingles in the body, that is your light coming in. Okay, now we're going to take a journey to this nothing space. So again, closing your eyes and just allowing yourself to slip into this space, the space of nothing yet everything. As you step into this circle, this safe, sacred circle. And we step into the space of nothing, allowing yourself to float. If you start thinking, go back to the heart. And again, it's not a trying, it is simply a softening and an allowing. Beautiful. Now, if you imagine, or perhaps you already see the soft white light, the light of you, And that soft white light flows through your creation, through your body, through your mind. And it starts to take any of those old dense pockets of energy, the emotions, the structures of limited belief systems. And it just begins to dissolve them. And again, this is your soul doing the work. Have a deep trust for you because you will not steer you wrong and you always have your best interest in mind. So it is a place of trust and allowing of you and a trusting of you. Beautiful. Begin to open your eyes and feel into your world, feel into you, perhaps how you 
visually perceive the world, how you feel, how things have shifted within the body, the mind, the emotions. So if there's anyone here who feels like they did not fully step in, please do drop here on the chat tab. And again, the beautiful thing is, is that as we all hold this space together, it is easier for each of us to also embody that light. And that is truly what the purpose of this wisdom circle is, is for us each to stand and bring that wisdom and light for others to see, for others to step into. All right, we got some questions here on the questions tab. Let's see, and any of the tool questions, we'll certainly work on those on 50 Questions Friday, except for the ones that really apply to the work that we're doing here. Um, So the space of highest potentials um, in this nothing space, again, we do create the tools. We create the, um, you know, the practitioner rings of the nothing space and nothing space generator. These are just like this wisdom circle. They are a space for us to tune into. And this wisdom circle is something that you can tune into at any time. So if you are having a rough spot, you know, when we get into the thick of things, it's tougher to really stop and breathe and move into the heart and allow in our light in this space just helps us. So to access this space, it is as simple as going into the heart space and just intending to be in this space. And you can certainly listen to the recording, but this space is always here and it is always safe and sacred. And it is a place that you can step into. And however you perceive this, however you imagine it, again, I imagine it as this large golden ring, a tensor ring, and there's a field within, and it's just a bright field of soft white light and golden light and rainbow colors. And it is a place where I've seen many of you being already as we have been holding this space for about a month now. So I'm just reading some um, messages here. Let's see. 
So here's a statement here. After collecting soul fragments, I am feeling I haven't fully stepped into that space of nothing and embodying my light. So again, it is being in the heart. It is asking, but not in a pleading, I need you way. It isn't asking from the heart. It is a giving of permission to yourself to allow in your light giving yourself permission that you are worthy to allow in your light. Making the clear conscious choice that there's no blockages, that there's nothing from keeping your light separate from you because your light has never been separate from you. We are simply bringing our awareness to what always has been and always is. So there's not a trying. There's not a trying. There's simply a softening and an allowing. In a question, if my aura has gold, platinum, or silver, have I stepped into my light? And the beautiful thing is, is that it is always going to be individual for you. And it'll probably change. Well, it'll most definitely change. The biggest thing is trust. Trusting yourself. Trusting your light. And again, we're not, hmm, we have to remain in that space of the heart without begging and pleading and feeling the need for your light. It's kind of like fighting to allow your light. So allowing is totally the opposite. Allowing is simply that, the softening. Okay, so this space, you do not have to stand long in this space. But if you can take a couple of minutes every day, a couple times a day, it's an exercise. Do it when you wake up. Do it before you go to bed. Do it as much as you can. So you know we've always all felt like there were missions and soul purposes and things we had to do. In this new time, the only things that I know necessary to do one embody my light to live life in joy as a creator being as a conscious creator in this new time that is all you truly need to do embody your light and live life in joy you want to change the world you want to help others around you this is all you need to do. Again, going back to that concept of my sister Brenda, standing in her light. When she invites someone in, they stand in their light. That is huge, and that is truly, truly all we need to do. Uh, question, if newly crossed over souls have already completed this process we are doing now as humans, 
So it has been interesting to watch people passing over in this past couple of years. We've seen a lot of people who don't take the traditional paths going into the light. You know, death doors can be open. And these death doors are just places where you can step through to go to the light. And we see people kind of just moving up. They, they, they step past all of those death doors. So completing this process for the lifetimes. So if there's a ghost, that is an aspect of the soul. That is a lifetime. And it is still in this plane. It is hard to say how many people have truly stepped into that ascension process. Now, ascension, so when we have the ascended masters like St. Germain and, and Jesus and, and any of these other, and Buddha and all these ascended masters, when they came into realization in that lifetime and they stepped through, their lifetimes did not. So there is one part of them that became the ascended master, which is different than what we are doing now. What we are doing now is that when we come into realization, which is just simply the conscious understanding of your energy and your soul. When we step into realization in this life, we become embodied masters because when we step into that realization, we are bringing all lifetimes into realization. This is huge. This has never been done before. And we are doing it right now is we are doing that work again, that wagon wheel where we're that central hub and we're bringing in all of our lifetimes. This is really what, this is one of the things to be in an embodied master, a living embodied master in this world is that we bring all those lifetimes to wisdom in this wisdom. So let me um, talk really quick too about this wisdom, this light. So we noticed this with one of our new chambers that we created that whenever somebody would sit in there and get out of this chamber, just a couple minutes later, I would see this golden light body that was in their field. Sometimes it was within them. And I was very curious about this and come to find that this is the golden light body that I've been witnessing is that wisdom that wisdom of bringing those lifetimes to soul, AKA wisdom, they begin to make up this new light body, this golden light body, and it can be any color. I just see it as presenting as gold. In this new light body that we begin to integrate into the human is what is clearing up everything in the physical, mental, emotional, in life situations. So truly to do the work of all those things that are in your experiences that you feel no longer serve you all of your lifetimes, everything is about embodying your light and just being, and again, just being and allowing your light to do that work. You do not have to direct it. And that's the beautiful thing. Again, the human is not in charge of your ascension of your embodiment but the human is very much in charge of the allowing so um let's see all right everybody um i know we did not cover a lot here today but we're going to keep doing work. And again, I really look forward to the next time that we gather 
And again, if you registered for the next um, event on February 14th, my apologies. I had to cancel that event. I will be on the road at the time. Um, but the next time that we do gather at the end of February, I would love for a couple people to bring some things to work on so that we can sit in real time and visualize and see how we work with our light with these certain things. So that way everybody can apply that to their own, and I don't really want to call it work, but their own being. Um, so anyway, I believe that we are going to end this here today. But again, please do take that opportunity at least once a day to come back into this space, that space of the wisdom circle. Because it is a space where we all hold that energy and it is there all the time. And again, it's not depleting to us or anything of that nature. Um, okay, so, yay, thank you all again for being here, and yes, we will see you next time, and um, <laughs> yeah, enjoy, it's a beautiful, beautiful time to be very excited, and I'm very excited for all of you who showed up here today, because we are taking shortcuts and fast paths for those of you who choose to do it that way. All right. Take care, everybody.